it's very important that we are realistic. So it's not like we talk about toxic positivity, right? We don't want to say everything is perfect and everything is wonderful and suck it up and everything is going to be okay. What we should be saying is, well, how can I help? What would be good for you right now? Hi everyone, this is Chanel de Almeida. So here I have with me some questions that the general public have asked regarding suicide. So let's check them out and see how we can go about it. So the first question is, what are the types of treatment and therapy for suicidal ideation? So there are many models of therapy, right? One model that I am trained in is cognitive behavioral therapy. Cognitive behavioral therapy is basically a fancy way of saying you are what you think. So this way we try to restructure thought processes by talking about the ideologies behind suicide or the kind of um, meaning that you give to life. Another one is dialectical behavioral therapy. That is uh, basically having techniques on how to manage relationships and emotions and how to regulate your emotions and also to deal with things like stress. So what are the factors that increase the risk of having thoughts about suicide? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So one of the main factors is some kind of mental health clinical disorder, for example, depression. Depression is generally associated with suicidality, right? Because when you are feeling so down and you have lost the meaning of life and purpose, you are more likely to think that life is not worth living. Very often people contemplate suicide not because they really want to die, right? That's a misconception. They're, it's just that they've reached the point in their life where they feel like there is no better option, right? So depression is something that makes the person feel like there is no point in living anymore because some factor within their life is not going the way they would like it to. Another one is anxiety, right? Anxiety, I mean, who hasn't been anxious? So when you think about anxiety, anxiety is basically another way of saying, I am afraid that something will go wrong, right? It's based in fear, right? So very often negative emotions are based in fear, right? So the only way to combat that depression or anxiety is to deal with the fear, the root cause. And other aspects is stress-related issues, right? If you lose your job, for example, or if you go through a breakup in a very extreme sense, it has a lot to do with emotional dysregulation. So when life gets stressful, that is when your risk increases, right? And life is generally stressful, right? But we need to manage though that stress because not all stress is bad, right? And very often it's the lack of coping mechanisms that causes an increase in the risk of suicidality and its ideation. Next question. What is the first thing I should do if I'm having suicidal thoughts? Very simply, you've got to talk to someone. You've got to let other people know, people you love, people you trust, that something is going on with you, right? Because it's not really you, it's your mind, right? So you need people that care about you to know that this is going on in your head. And the more you talk about it, the easier it becomes to process it. Remember that very often we are not conscious of what's going on in our heads. We just act on automatic. What are the warning signs of suicidal thoughts? Ah. Well, one of the surefire ways of recognizing suicidality is withdrawal, right? Social withdrawal. That is, when someone is not hanging out anymore or they choose to isolate themselves, that's a very good indication, generally. Remember that there is no standard way, but there are certain signs, like for example, if something really bad happens and something very stressful happens in someone's life, like a friend's, pay attention to their behaviors, right? Are they not talking much anymore? Have they changed? Do they not show up to work? Uh, have they lost um, meaning in terms of their purpose, their hobbies? Do they not like listening to music when they used to love listening to music? These are the ways to really tell because their behavior changes and they, and they don't seem like themselves. How should we respond if someone we care about confides in us about having suicidal thoughts? First, what you've got to do is listen and be there for them and support them and say, you know what, 
I am here for you, right? That's one of the best ways you can deal with someone telling you that, you know, they're contemplating suicide. This is how you create that conversation and then you check in with them. You make sure, you know, if they tell you today, you check on them tomorrow, send them a message, hey, how, how's it going? You know, and be there for them, right? Don't try to solve their issue, right? I know it's human nature to want to fix things, but sometimes it's just best to listen and then direct them in the direction of helping themselves, right? Because it's always possible to convince someone not to hurt themselves or kill themselves. It's actually very, very um, common to not commit suicide when you feel like enough people care about you. So that's why it's so important to show that you care and that you're there, the person that is telling you that they're contemplating suicide. Does social media have an effect on having suicidal thoughts? A resounding yes. Uh, social media is a very influential thing on the mental state, especially among adolescents and young people, right? Because now, you know, those days you used to be able to compare yourself to your neighbor. Now you can compare yourself to Kim Kardashian. You can compare yourself to oh, your favorite musician, right? It, it's, it's, the, it's a fishbowl mentality where you get to see everybody's business and everybody's highlight reel. So because we're social animals, we tend to compare ourselves anyway. And then when you see people doing things that you would like to do, or if you're not doing something at that moment that someone else is doing, like say your friend or your colleague or someone you really like to follow, uh, then uh, you're going to feel bad about yourself generally, right? So you need to build that resilience. So social media is a great tool, but it has real repercussions on the, the mental health and the mental state of people if we don't know how to use it effectively and efficiently. So social media has a direct impact on say, depression rates and anxiety rates. There's enough clinical evidence that shows that social media does impact mental health negatively. So you have to use it responsibly, just like any other thing. Thank you for joining me and I hope this was insightful because suicide prevention is a very, very important thing to talk about in this day and age especially, right? Because we have so much pressure and mental health is very, very important. It is, in fact, the essential item that we need to kick off every day when we wake up. It is your mind that matters.